Okay, so the first step in installing the Dark Rock Pro 4 is to remove these brackets from the motherboard. So we just need to loosen each of these four screws. And then we should be able to just lift the brackets off. So importantly, don't throw these out, put them into your motherboard box. So you ever come to change your CPU cooler in the future or to sell your motherboard, you're not gonna have to go searching for them. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is put the mounting brackets onto the stock motherboard backplate. So in the cooler package itself, you get one labeled AMD. So that's the packaging we're gonna have to open. One of the other nice things you get in the box with the CPU cooler is a magnetic screwdriver. So I've been using this for the build so far and having the magnetic tip on the screwdriver makes it much easier for managing any screws. So I'd recommend you open the box right at the start of your build and get the screwdriver out. Okay, so we need to put these little spacers over the back plate. And in our little bracket, it has two holes on each side. One of them is labelled AM4, which is the one on the top, so we're going to put the screws through the AM4 marked place on the socket and line them up then with the spacers. And then all we need to do is screw that into place. Okay, just the same process on the top then. Okay, so we've got the screws in through the holes labeled AM4 because this is an AM4 socket that we have. And then just screw things into place. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add some thermal paste to the CPU. And if you look online, there's a whole variety of different ways people do this. Um, everyone has their own reason of why their way is best. I prefer just to put a pea-sized amount in the middle of the CPU. And then when the cooler is applied, that will squash the paste out and cover the whole of the CPU. So thermal paste comes with the cooler in a little syringe. So all we need to do is squeeze a little bit out into the middle of the CPU. Okay, so that looks about right to me. Okay, so the next thing is just to line up the CPU cooler with the bracket. Importantly, don't forget to remove the plastic sticker from the bottom of the CPU cooler. Okay, so we need to make sure the Be Quiet logo is the right way up, and then it's just a matter of aligning this with the center of the socket. Next, we want to align this little metal bracket up with the CPU killer. So it just goes in through the middle and then if we line the holes up. Now we need to put two screws, one down here and one at the back to secure the killer to the motherboard. The problem is we need to get the screwdriver in through holes on top of the killer so we're going to have to remove these two little bits from the top of the killer. They should just unscrew. Okay, so importantly at the top, we're able to fit the screwdriver through the hole, but not the screw. So what we need to do is line the screw up here, feed the screwdriver through, and then pass the screw into the screwdriver. And then we are able to line the holes up at the bottom and secure things in place. So I'm just going to loosely tighten that one and then repeat the same process with the one at the back. Okay, so I'm just going to alternate 
tightening each of these up a little bit at a time. Because obviously we don't want to tighten one up and then not have the other one tightened. So it's going to pull the pillar one way on the socket. So a couple of turns of each at a time. Okay, so that's that back one fully screwed in. And now the front one is fully screwed in as well. Okay, to finish off, all we need to do is screw these little caps at the top back in again. Okay, so that's the heatsink onto the motherboard. The next thing to do is insert the fans onto the heatsink. And this CPU cooler comes with two different fans. We've got a 135mm fan to go into the middle between the two towers. And we've got also a 120mm fan which goes on this side of the tower. It's smaller because it means it's not going to get caught on the RAM itself. So before we put the fans on, it's important to talk a little bit about airflow through fans. So fans have a front and a back. So this is the front of the fan. You can see it's got the logo and it doesn't have any bits of plastic blocking the fan. On the back, you tend to have these bits of plastic and the fan looks clearly to be the wrong way round. So with a fan, air is going to come in through the front and out the back. So it's important we install these fans on the heatsink the way we want air to come through the case. So when we go on to look at our case, air is going to come in for the, the front of the case, which is going to be the right hand side. We want it to go through the heatsink and then out the back of the case, which is going to be the left hand side over here. So it's important when we put our fans onto the heatsink, we want the front of the fan at the right hand side and the back of the fan at the left hand side. So it's going to be pushing cool air coming into the case through the heatsink and then out the back of our case. The other thing to mention is we are going to have two different fans on the CPU cooler, but we have only one CPU fan header on our motherboard. So they supply you a little kit with a fan splitter on it. So it's got one four pin connector on the front and two little four pin adapters. So both our fans are going to be able to be controlled by the motherboard and spin at the same speed. So I'm going to plug this in right at the start because I find it makes things a little bit easier. So the other thing we're going to have to be careful with is the amount of cable and where the cable comes out. So I would like the cable to be cut. The CPU header is at the top of the motherboard. So I would like most of the cable to be hidden and only a little bit to come out the top. So I'm going to have the fan installed with the cable wrapped around here. And only this little bit at the top is going to come out. It's going to make things much tidier. Okay, so to secure the fans to the heatsink, the fans all have little holes and we've got these little metal brackets. We just need to slide this in through the holes on the fan itself and then pull it back to here so it catches on the heatsink. And then it's just a matter of repeating the same process at the top. Okay, so it's just the same thing. So if I line these up in the holes in the fans and then pull it all the way over to here, and it's just locked into place. So now this fan is nicely secured. Okay, so next thing to do is put the 120 millimeter fan on the front of the heatsink. Importantly, we want the direction to be going the same way as the bigger 135 millimeter fan. And it's just the same process. We align these little metal clips with the front of the fan and then catch them on to the heatsink until they clip in and lock in place. And then we just do the same thing on the other side.
Okay, so that's just clipped on and locked into place. Okay, so now we can plug the end of this fan into the fan splitter. And there's only one way it can go in. And then the last thing we need to do is to plug the end of the fan splitter into the CPU fan header on the motherboard, which is just here at the top. And again, there's only one way that this will plug in. And then we'll just tuck any excess cable in underneath and make everything look nice and tidy.